Yo, in this video, I'm going to summarize everything I found relevant and interesting from the dev Q&A with clips of the actual devs speaking. First things first, here's the devs literally confirming they watch my videos. Hey, and it just, it, it feels like a movie, like cinematic when you play without the HUD and, or you're watching someone without the HUD. I have that stuff on in the background, like when I'm having dinner and stuff, you know what I mean? And playing, play, I play a lot, but sometimes it's a little stressful. I don't want to lose my gear and things like that, so. Hey, you already know, absolute W devs. Now that I know the devs actually watch me, I should make more joke video titles like this one. Seriously though, thank you for the beautiful game. I can see so much inspiration from my favorite grimdark works like the manga Front Mission Dog Life and Dog Style. This game goes so hard, I love it. Okay, so the first question I found relevant was this one about the rigs. Is there any plan to allow us to have fully modular rigs? For example, being able to mix and match where storage boxes go and where large container bins or weapon racks sit on our rigs. The short answer is yes. The long answer is I cannot promise a specific release date or upgrade for that stuff. Jeff expands further by saying the rigs are the way they are because it's user-friendly UI and it works for their vision of game balance, but they are cooking with different ideas that they are exploring. So yeah, let them cook. That's going to be a common answer throughout this Q&A because obviously this game is super early access, right? Which pretty much translates to we cooking right now, but if you want to taste test it, here it is. Okay, on to the next question I found interesting. Will you be adding futuristic weapons and gear and more futuristic enemies to the game? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Especially for the futuristic weapons and gear. It, the, the weapon system, I mean, you know from an end user standpoint, you're customizing everything. Like, like it, it, to me personally, it makes no sense to transition from early access to release without some sort of, uh, 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 additional kind of futuristic tech weaponry. Now, in typical Fun Dog style, I don't know if that's going to be space lasers and, and laser swords, but um, it, it, there's going to be some cool stuff that's really bizarre and, uh, and future tech in there. Jeff says this shit gonna take time because we got a design for both player models and AI models to use the weapons. Well, the factions have different voice lines in full release, different callouts, languages, etc. Being able to quickly identify approaching squads based on their language or radio chatter would be really cool. Yes, it would. Um, can I answer just yes? Yes, you can, Jason. Don't worry, I got you, bro. So Jason basically says, let us cook for the long answer because shit takes time with another round of recordings that they're doing with external vendors. He also gives further detail about giving personalized audio states to the AI. So, you know, if you alerted a squad of Euruskans or if you alerted a squad of Eurasians, for example. I'm going to play the clip where he says this because he gives much better detail about this. The most important thing is, is getting gameplay feedback to everyone while they're playing. So I think not only just having, you know, new lines so that you can differentiate the, the, the factions and as many units as possible, you know, heavy units should have a little bit different um, VO or maybe the lines or at least the way they're processed or the, the way they sound, but also the state of the AI there, you know, in game right now we have patrol, we have when they are investigating you and when they're aggressive but i think they're a little too similar and i would like to give them a much more separation so you could tell just by listening like oh they, they're on patrol they don't see me or maybe they heard me and now they're investigating me and there's a couple more states that i'm hoping that we can get in there and that i'm going to be um talking with jeff and the team a lot about because we're currently you know writing up script for that and i'm currently talking to studio about casting and all that stuff so definitely working on that really excited to get that going better audio cues would be so useful especially for no hud players like me not only would it be tactically useful but it would add so much to the immersive experience what are your thoughts or plans on keeping the game unpredictable and deadly? The night maps are a great addition, as well as the occasional grab or spawn in the elephant mausoleum. New AI events, change in environment, possibly? Yes, to all of that. Like, actually, there's even uh, for uh, update one, uh, I just re rolled the dice on some specific um, uh, the scenario system uh, to allow it uh, to do uh, different things and choices now that's not a guarantee is it's going to play radically different because it's it, there is some rng in there yeah, actually some there's a there's an f load in there and uh, uh one of the things that we'd love to eventually get in there and i think miles has talked about it a little bit is is, is a um, is a uh, systemic system that does a much better job of reacting to the state of the war as you organically play it uh the, the all the foundations there we just have to build upon it and get some time to like hook it up to uh more uh, uh player or event feedback um uh, I could easily, we could, well, it's the me show. We could easily uh, uh, hook it up to very specific player actions. That'll be part of it. I don't want to do that because like one of the things that I've said a lot is the game exists despite you, 
not because of you. So I think if there's very clear, like, hey, if you shoot medium mech six times, all of a sudden your agent's double and strict. Like, people will figure that out because people are smart. And the, and, and the game needs to be more about if, if, if medium mechs happen to be doing this against the other factions, whether or not you're engaging. Um, and uh, uh, the trick there will be what communication do we need to provide so you understand what's happening and what is even necessary? Because, like, ultimately... Uh, the fantasy of the game, like one of the things I try to put myself in the shoes of is like, if I really was a homeless old dude living in the sewers that just wanted water, <laughs> would I really be having a critical eye on, hmm, it looks like Yuruska's retaking, uh, you know, uh, 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 Scrapyard Nexus. It'd be like, no, I'm hungry. Like, <laughs> where, where can I get food? You know what I mean? Like, my priorities would be radically different. So. All right, so they are making the AI director system better and more relevant to the real-time conflict and events between the factions that's happening. What I found as interesting was that Jeff also touches on how this system is designed around their vision for this game to revolve not around the player, but the world the player is in. Will later iterations of the character progression slash leveling system carry over our progress? If slash when later updates change the system, would there be an attempt to carry over our currently achieved progress with characters, or would character XP and prestiges be wiped to put everyone back on an even baseline? I'm aware of the concern. I can make no promises. I've listed some options to give ourselves. We'll find the right way to move forward. Jeff actually talks about multiple ideas that they are exploring in the actual Q&A video, but nothing is set in stone right now. And he literally brainstorms an idea in the middle of answering that question. I've linked the full Q&A in the description of this video if you want to hear the full unedited answer. But the takeaway, as you saw from that short clip, is let him cook. Jason talks more about adding different languages for the voice lines of the factions, which in my opinion would be great for immersion. Even going back to the VO stuff when we were talking about recording in other voices in Russian for your skin, you know, having the delivery that'll give so much information even though people won't understand necessarily what they're saying in the next clip he explores the addition of theme music for each of the factions basically whatever faction was controlling a particular area of the map have certain musical elements from that faction you know like eurasia would have more of those uh maybe the like the tibetan instruments or the throat singing and then when it was on the other side it would be more the vocal would be more gregorian or maybe the european has more of the like the guitar stuff and the industrial stuff and maybe Eurasia has more of the more of the cleaner electronic synthetic stuff. After that he discusses the ambient sound in this game which for me personally and from what I've seen in my YouTube comments across my videos is a huge highlight of the game. Ambient layers is it's just functioning as a base and before it transitions to the light combat which happens when you're either um, when you're taking fire uh, I would love to have certain layers start creeping in as tension, like maybe you're stealth behind a wall and there's soldiers on the other side, but they can't see you. We, we already have that in there with proximity with a certain number of AI around you to have these other layers start coming in and it just builds tension, but it, it was given away a little bit too much. So we had to kind of just backtrack, but I, I think having the right layers in there, it starts creeping in and gets more tense but the combat hasn't kicked off yet, so. The next and final question I found interesting was about the character cosmetics in this game. Currently, Mass Band has a couple different player models that cycle through if you die. I absolutely love this feature and that it is random. Are there any plans for expanding on this feature for multiple character models for all of the different classes? So one of the things that we'll get in there eventually is is a uh, an intro animatic, I'll call it, where you can see a new hero arrives and you could see your model uh, as it comes back in uh, uh, that randomness uh, was intentional I'm glad you like it and uh, as many of those as, as we can make uh, I would love to have put in and uh, uh, obviously when additional characters start to become playable those should have variety as well okay that's pretty much everything from the dev Q&A that I thought was relevant to me I definitely encourage you to listen to the whole thing if you want to know more about the devs because in the full video there's a lot more nuance and brainstorming and you get to know them better on a personal level. If you thought this video was helpful let me know so I'll do more like this in the future. Hope you have a great day or night.